Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create these bouncing animation uh, utilizing the easing functions that we developed last week uh, on kotus.com slash easings. If you haven't checked them out, please go ahead and check them out. I have a description of the easing and obviously we have the easing functions uh, visualized down here. Um, so time or progress of the animation over time and how uh, the easing function is generated. And uh, in the last tutorial, if you haven't watched it, I'm going to put the link down here. Please go ahead and check it out. We, uh, I guess we utilize this ease in out expo, uh, which creates this cool animation, which is like the whooshy effect, as you can see. Whoosh. And we utilize the cubic bezier function down here in the CSS to generate these. But as I said in the last tutorial, there are some easing functions that you cannot use CSS. It's, it's actually impossible. For example, we have ease out elastic. You can see this elasticity, which is a very cool effect. It's obviously not possible using CSS, and you have to utilize JavaScript. And uh, we have the functions that create this kind of easing. These functions are named after, uh, are created by a software developer called uh, Penner. So these equations are known as Penner equations. Uh, the, other, the other one that we cannot use CSS to uh, create that is ease out bounce, which we're going to utilize to create for this animation. And uh, if you haven't, again, if you haven't checked it out, please go ahead to kotus.com slash easings. I will put it in the description. And go play with it, you know, click on each of these, see which one of these you like. And uh, you can utilize the play button down here as well, you know, see uh, all the uh, easing functions that we uh, compiled and put over here. So for example, we have ease in, out, bounce. These, these functions are uh, basically, I probably, I, I believe they're, they're created by uh, sampling the uh, signal that is generated using the math functions to replicate the real world uh, movements, right? For example, this one is another cool one. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to go to, as always, to kotus.com slash codity, where I create uh, almost all of my prototypes, and then I'll create a new prototype. Uh, I'm going to, in my HTML panel, I'm creating it, uh, let's just name it ball, um, and then in the CSS, I'll just give it some styling, I'll give it a width of 40 pixel, height of 40 pixel, I'll set the position to be absolute because I want to move it freely in the page. I'm going to put the left of, uh, or maybe giving it a background of gold so that you can see where it is, and then left of 50%, and then border radius of 50% to make it round and nice. So we have this over here, and now what we want to do, I'm going to go back to the easing functions. I'm going to go scroll down here to ease. Um, ease out bounce, right? I'm going to JavaScript and I'm going to copy this and paste it in the JS panel in my uh, you know prototype. I'm going to switch to the layout over here on top, which gives me a more real space here. And then what I need to do, I'm going to create some initials. So here, if you go back. In the general description, we basically describe what these arguments to the function mean. So t is the current time, current step. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to tell you here. t is the current step or current time, the time that we are right now in. b is the beginning, uh, uh, beginning number or beginning value of whatever attribute we want to like animate. Here we want to animate the y. So we want to move it down, so it, as if it's like it's a ball bouncing, and then C is the amount of change for that attribute uh, from the beginning to the end. So we want to like move this 300 pixel down, right? So with that said, uh, the change is going to be 300 minus zero because zero is the initial position on the y-axis or vertically for this ball, right? So what I'm having here is uh, I am going to create a start position, which is zero, right? 
and my end position is 300 okay so today I'm going to introduce you a function in JavaScript called uh, request animation frame and that's basically what you really need to know in order to create animations through JavaScript right so just just to show you how you can animate in JavaScript anyways uh, I'm going to create a animate function so I'm going to create an animate function and I definitely need to have a reference uh, to the ball uh, div that I have in my HTML so I'm going to create a variable called ball and I name and I will use document dot query selector and then pass the ball class uh, as the parameter here so I have a reference to that ball and then I will say ball dot style dot transition and I will set this to transform and let's say one second and then I'm gonna say ball dot style dot transform equals to translate y and then 300 pixel right so when I call this animation animate function it basically should run the animation though the problem is that you, you, you saw that there is no animation just jump the problem is that the because of the nature of JavaScript it doesn't get enough time to actually run these functions uh, on, on the right order so I'm gonna set set timeout here so to give it a little bit of a timing here and then I will copy this ball style transform in the set timeout right now you can see that if I play this you have this animation that goes from zero or the initial state and then utilizing the translate y property on transform uh, for, and then 300 pixel it just runs that for one second right but that's not what we want to do we want to utilize this because right now this one is basically the easing function is ease out if i don't write any easing function it defaults to ease out which is kind of like the start is constant but the end will be a little bit slower if I run it again you'll see that at the end it gets a little bit slower but anyways I'm gonna just remove all of these and as I said I'm introducing you the function called um, uh, request animation frame so what this function does is actually if you it, it basically says that uh, I'm running an animation and before um, performing the before the browser performs the paint or repaint of the screen because that's what the browser does uh, I want to run this function and I will pass the animate function which is the function that you know I'm going to put the next state of the position of my animation in that so again I'm gonna do like um, uh, I, I, so what I what I did was that I created a function animate and inside that I used request animation frame and then passed it a callback function called animate right so what it does is that it tells the browser that before repainting I want you to run this animate and the way it does the number of times it runs this callback is basically based on the refresh rate of your of your uh, monitor which is around 60, 60, uh, 60 frames per second right so 60 frames per second I'm gonna define the frame rate here it is 60 frames per second and obviously the second is thousand milliseconds that's how you um, write the second in JavaScript using milliseconds right and then let's say we define a duration of the animation to be one second which is thousand milliseconds right so we write the time in milliseconds right and this is basically a frame per millisecond right which is obviously 60 frame per thousand milliseconds or 60 frame per second now what I need to do is uh, obviously another thing I want to define because that T here if we go back here you can see that it's the current time or current step and the current step for us is zero so let's say current step to be zero right 
So I want what, what I want to do is that obviously when the request animation frame runs 60 times per second, I want the current step to become one more, right? So current step one more, and then I'm going to utilize the ease out bounds function. So ease out bounds function, I pass it the current step, then I need the B or beginning of the uh, animation, which is the zero, or I have already the created this so I'm going to put start and then the change which is end minus start and then I have the total duration or the total number of steps of my animation which is the multiplication of the frame rate by my duration right so I just say frame rate multiplied by duration right so this function basically returns the next position or next position of my ball on the y-axis. So I'm going to define var new y equals to zero because that's the default. That, that's the that's the initial position which is zero. And then I'll say new y equals to is out bounds. And now I'm going to use ball dot style dot translate a uh, transform equals to obviously translate y. But now I have the new value here. I'm going to use the JavaScript uh, string concatenation. So plus, plus. And then within that, I'm going to put the new Y value. And then pixels. Right? So what happens here is that this animation gets run. But then there is a problem. Because request animation frame runs 60 times per second forever right but I need to stop it and where I stopped it where I stop it is actually with using the if a statement if current step is equal or more than my total steps which is frame rate multiplied by duration right I want to return I don't want the animation to run anymore right and you can see how awesome we have this bouncing animation I'm going to go to the CSS and change the background uh, of the body to maybe 333 and now it's more visible uh, how you create it. we created this bouncing animation. So again using the functions in the easing functions uh, in kotus.com easings I just took the ease out bounce and copied the JavaScript function here to my prototype or in your case either in your prototype in kotus.com or in your javascript file i just paste it in and then i created an animate class within the animate class i set the uh, i i just increase the num the current step that i have initially set to zero because that's the beginning of the time so i want this to be plus plus and then I utilize this is out bounce function, passing it the right parameters, which is obviously the current step, start of the animation, which is zero, and then the, the amount of change, which is end minus start, which is 300 minus zero, which is 300. And then the total number of steps, which is obviously the frame rate of the animation, which is 60 frames per second, which actually the, the one that requests animation frame uh, runs on. And then obviously multiplied by my duration gives me the total number of steps that I need for this animation, right? And then having that new value, I utilize the transform property on the style to kind of translate it on Y using that new Y value. And then because this request animation frames runs 60 times per second forever, I need to obviously uh, put an if here, if my current step is more than the total number of steps that I defined in my animation based on the duration, just return this function, which pretty much stops the operation of request animation frame, right? And then defining this function, I just need to call it once in my JavaScript, right? And then you will have this cool animation. The good thing is that right now, let's say you wanna, you, instead of using this, uh, let's say uh, bouncing function, you want to utilize the uh, elastic, right? You want to use this one. So it's as easy as copying this function, going over to the prototype down here, paste this, 
right? And then get this name and paste it instead of is out bounds, we're gonna use is out elastic. Now if I run the animation, you'll see how awesome you know you have this elasticity going on, right? Which is the base of my next animation, the next tutorial, which is uh, you know that thing that I showed you in the teaser in the last last uh, Sunday that you can drag you know the the menu uh, on the left on the mobile view and has that awesome elasticity when it reaches to the end position uh, of it in that animation right so I hope you enjoyed this anim this tutorial uh, this was pretty much an advanced tutorial if you had any questions please go ahead and ask uh, and obviously what I need what I need you to do please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed the tutorials and uh, share this as much as possible to support me create these tutorials I know that there are not so many people doing these tutorials on YouTube so please support me please share these tutorials in social media uh, let other people know about this and uh, well if you didn't enjoy the tutorial still clicking on that button is free so yes have a good day and night. Goodbye.